In this video, we're going to discuss the anisotropy in strength properties of rock. Remember that strength is the maximum stress that a material can support before having irrecoverable deformations. Let's start our discussion with shear strength anisotropy. Natural rocks are often anisotropic, as you can see in this example with this sedimentary rock, which is a shale composed by layers of uh, finely compacted uh, sealstone and shale with organic matter, which is the, the darker regions. As a result of this layering, we have seen before that we can have what is called a stiffness anisotropy. That means that the Jan modulus along the bedding direction as we can see in this schematic, is going to be higher than the Jan modulus in the vertical direction. All right, however, you should not confuse stiffness with the strength. The strength of the rock, that's going to be the maximum stress, is going to depend also on the bonding between each of these layers. And for example, in this particular schematic, uh, we are assuming that bedding interfaces are weak planes. In such case, the strength of such rock would be higher in, with loading in vertical direction than when loaded in horizontal direction. Because when loaded in horizontal direction, we might subject to tension some of these interfaces. The bird is getting me out of concentration, but let me continue. Uh, okay, but what about if we, for example, were to load one of these samples at an angle? Well, we observe in the case of weak interfaces that if we load the rock and that aligns with some of the bedding planes at an orientation in which the shear is going to be higher on the direction parallel to the planes, it's going to be easier to break these interfaces in shear. Some of these interfaces may have even a very small uh, cohesive strength, so that it's going to be uh, easier for some of those to break in shear. All right, so there are some cases in which the bedding interfaces are weak. There are some other cases in which the bedding interfaces are very strong and thus may give you an opposite response to what we see over here. In general, in order to characterize this anisotropy, what we do is to measure the strength properties of the rock as a function of the orientation between the loading direction and the angle of bedding. In this example, what is measured is the unconfined compression strength as a function of the angle. And for this schematic, we also see that, for example, here in uh, this particular case is the one that we saw before with weak interfaces where the strength at the loading in the direction of the bedding is lower than the strength perpendicular to that direction. And there might be some other cases in which this might reverse. The same thing that we're saying now for unconfined compression strength uh, it also applies to tensile strength. It's usually easier to fracture a rock in the plane of the interfaces, and that would mean with the that would mean with the tension perpendicular to the interface, than if the fracture would have to go through each of these layers. All right, we're going to see an example about that in in just a bit. Uh, just hold on. Here, uh, I'd like to show. An actual case where we see a, a plotting also van confined compression strength as a function of the inclination angle. And we can see particularly in this case that as we approach the most favorable angle for shear failure, which if you remember is 45 degrees plus a friction angle divided by two, let's say that friction angle is about 30 degrees, and that's going to be 45 plus 15 equal to 60 degrees. 
is around here. And at that orientation, the uniaxial compressive strength is going to be the lowest. Why? Because that's the plane with the highest shear to normal effective stress uh, ratio. So we often see that at this orientation we can fail these rocks at a much lower stress than what it would do at I, in another direction. For example, here this is about 20% of the strength either in the parallel or perpendicular direction. We're going to see later on that this has profound implications in wellbore stability and also that it affects hydraulic fracturing. I'd like to show here one more uh, example with data of a study in which we tested unconfined compression strength for uh, samples that were uh, vertical and horizontal. So you can see that for the horizontal ones, uh, which would be the ones parallel to bedding, in general the UCS is lower than the unconfined compression strength of vertical samples, which would be this one. And what is the reason for that? So one reason we said is the strength of the interfaces and the other reason is that fractures in the case of a shear fracture going uh, or fracturing a vertical sample we have to go the entire sample and not through the interfaces. So let's see that and let's see uh, how that looks in reality. All right, here you see videos of which result from X-ray tomography from samples that we broke in the laboratory. For example, this is the shale I was sharing with you before. In this case, it was failed in direction uh, with loading in axial direction. And you can see the bedding is horizontal. So when the rock is broken, the fracture has to go all through all those layers and break all of those layers. So you can see here the shear fracture. Uh, remember that those shear fractures usually align at a particular orientation that respects a shear failure. Uh, in some other cases also you can see that as the fracture propagates, some of these bedding interfaces may also fail and reactivate as the fracture goes through. All right, so just for clarification purposes, and this is another example. This is a cleaner fracture. Let's go to the next one. Uh, another example of a clean fracture going through, through layers. So for clarification, uh, what we see over here is the outer structure of this rock. And what we see on the right, it's what is called a set of ortho slices. Two cross sections that go through the entire rock and uh, what we see in colors is the 3D shape of the fracture. All right, here we have now an example of a sample failed in direction of the bedding and we can see that this type of fracture now goes preferentially through the interfaces and sometimes it might deviate, it might go through the entire uh, rock layers, but most times, if suitable, it would find those planes of weakness, those interfaces, and propagate through those rather than go through the layers themselves. So you can see, for example, here and there, how the fracture tries to go through these interfaces. And in this case, it just find, finds it uh, easier to propagate as a shear fracture and follow the direction that you should expect in a shear fracture. Uh, this is a cleaner example of that. Uh, so we see, for example, here on the right, the main shear fracture, but we can also see some of these planes along the interfaces reactivated as the fracture propagates. 
and uh, here we have one more case uh, let me go to the next one and now we have the example of the rock fail at an angle so at an angle we see much better how some of these fractures will try to go through or in between the interfaces reactivating or creating fracture in those planes that might be particularly weak let me pause this one over here like for example going through here or going through there and finding its way its way as in a sort of stairway in order to get into the other side going sometimes through the interfaces themselves but some other times uh, jumping through the layers of uh, the intact rock in order to uh, finally uh, take this orientation of a shear fracture of more or less 45 degrees plus friction angle uh, divided by 2. So here we see a nice example of this staircase I was telling about. Fracture goes through the interface, then jumps, goes through the layer, and then goes in this case perpendicular to the layering, finds an interface, finds an interface and continues. And also you can see that very clearly inside the fracture in this uh, three-dimensional anim animation. All right, uh, this is everything for this lecture. And remember that we're going to pick up this topic when we talk about wellbore stability and hydraulic fracturing.